welcome to this episode of the Smarter Business Podcast. This is business advice with a video bent. What we like to do on this podcast is talk to business owners, business people who are doing interesting things with video to move their business forward. And today we have Nick Koziel, who's got a podcast called That Sounds Terrific. He's also kind of a jack of all trades consultant at this point, and he has a lot of other stuff going on. So, Nick, I will give you a chance to kind of introduce yourself and what you're doing at this moment. Oh, great. Well, thanks for having me, Neil. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, a pleasure to be on a show and uh, especially your show and um, how supportive you've been through the, the Bidwheel Creator Network. I love it. And part of the reason I joined was because that sounds terrific. I wanted to have a better video component. Um, and I needed a, a great network to, to do that in. And like you said, I'm the host of a podcast called That Sounds Terrific, but I also have that TST career support group where we network with other individuals that are um, you know, either unemployed or looking to switch careers. And I bring in different special guests to talk about um, those types of career transitions. Um, and everything I kind of do, like you said, a little bit of jack of all trades, uh, you know, I coach different clients in social media and, um, I help businesses with their startup, um, especially around like websites and like how to kind of put together their first marketing plan that's engaging the community or at the very least their, um, uh, prospective customers and, uh, video all plays a, a big role in that. And it's just one of those mediums that, um, we've always had someone else kind of doing in the other positions that I've been in. So I've done a little bit of a video, but you know, I'm like, what better place to learn than an actual creator network, you know, out of Vidwheel. And so that's kind of a little bit about me. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And that, that, that's great to hear because that's the kind of role we're trying to fill, right? The uh, folks who have had some exposure, maybe a little bit of success with creating their own content or utilizing video in, you know, sales or other communications, we want to help kind of push them forward and, and help grow their businesses through video. So right. that's awesome. We're on the right track then. That's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it definitely is. And what I love about the network um, is it's a different type of, you know, creator in each person that's in it, right? So um, it's not just about video. It all has that video bent, like you said in the intro, right? Um, but there's a bunch of different ideas that come from, from different walks of life. We have, you know, people that are straight out consultants and, and people that are straight out video aquifers, right? So what I like about that is I get a lot of really neat ideas on what, what's working for them. And then maybe how I can kind of twist it or contort it for a client or even for my own show. Um, so that's great. Right. Yeah. Having that kind of diversity of um, industries and, and uses uh, can really, it can help, right? With a more well-rounded uh, um, setup. Um, and yeah, you know, I, uh, the other thing I was going to comment on is that recording wise here on our system, your, your vid kit is looking real sharp. So, you know, <laughs> soon yeah, to come it. to the uh tst podcast so yeah definitely yeah we were just talking about how <laughs> how i probably should have shaved a little bit because it's a little too sharp <laughs> i need where's that blur effect that we need right? <laughs> right 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 soften the edges a little yeah <clears throat> all right well i always ask my guests and this may be harder to do for you than most because you do have your 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 uh your hands in so many different projects, but if you had to boil down what you do to one sentence, what would you say it is? Um, I like to say that I'm the human puzzle architect. I connect other people to um, their passions and to other people that have similar passions or can help them with that. Excellent. That's a great uh, segue into what I was going to talk about next too. So it all works yeah. out. <laughs> setting things up right <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah that's what i wanted i wanted to chat about like i would consider you and have a few people in my network that i would i would call kind of these super connectors right if i come up with a question about something you've got a guy right, right. or girl sorry or woman yep. no, yeah. a person um, <laughs> a person <laughs> Yes. Or maybe maybe a dog. I don't know. Yes, depends, yes, right? yes, yes. It could be it could be anyone, but you have them in your network. Um, 
how did you build such an extensive network? And was there kind of an eye on this super connector status that I've just given you? Or was it, um, was it, you know, like an organic thing? Um, I think it's a little bit of, uh, you know, luck and a little bit of or organic and a little bit of hard work, right? So it's, it's all a combination. It's like one third of each of those things. And when I started my career, it was in higher education. And um, I remember being a residence hall director and my connection to technology was really the students, right? So, you know, when, <laughs> here's dating myself, when America Online Insta a Messenger was a big thing, I had to be on that. I had to learn that because I needed to know like what my residents were doing and what my RAs were doing. And so there was a lot of that. And then when LinkedIn launched, um, I found it was a great tool as an alumni person to connect with, um, you know, those past students that have graduated and try to bring them back to the college. It was a great way to find people. And so growing that over time, I always try um, to be, you know, really useful to the people I connect with. I don't like to just connect chat and then do kind of nothing. Um, so that's sort of where that that human puzzle thing started to come into play because I realized, you know, I'll meet Neil and Neil, it, you know, needs people to help with video or needs people to help with certain issues. And I go, well, I just met this other gentleman or this other person, gal, whatever you want, you know, whoever it is, and I try to connect them back. And so what that's done is, you know, you kind of, I, I scratch your back, you scratch mine kind of thing. I've found that the organic part is that people are coming back to me and asking me for either more advice, more connections, or, you know, hey, how can I help you? You help me out with this thing. Right. Yeah, there's there's a reciprocal nature to any of those um, those kind of intros, the the just anytime you help somebody out, right? Like uh, right. The, there's there's definitely some level of debt there that I think people feel, right? Like they want to, you contribute to them, they want to contribute back, right? Like yeah. from a, uh, a good, a good place, less a, uh, <laughs> less a debt place, I guess. So, right. It's a partnership, you know, <laughs> and a lot of my roles had a lot to do with, you know, fundraising, even if I wasn't being the direct fundraiser, you know, we, we, we joke around and say we're the friend raisers in, in the alumni world. There you um, go. And so a lot of that had to do with, creating a real partnership. And that's like what I stand by. Um, some of the other people that I've worked with in fundraising are, you know, go and get the gift, go and ask for that money. And, um, you know, they'll make a very small connection. But to me, I've found that the larger gifts, whether it be monetary or even just time and talent, have come because we established a relationship that was sort of reciprocal and truly reciprocal, right. you know, I could give you an award right now, Neil, for being the best videographer in the world and ask for $10,000. And I, I don't think that's, that's warm and fuzzy for right. everybody, right? Some feels, it works for. Yeah, feels more transactional, right? Right. Well, that's, and that's the, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of like two philosophies on business there, right? Like right. The, the hunting versus gardening, right? Are you like growing this, community around you this network mm -hmm. of people who want to do business with you or are you just you know yeah. taking your shots when you can and uh just moving on and one is a little more of a i don't know churn and burn destructive type process while the other one is actually like building a lot more value for the future so it sounds like you're at least yeah. on the the, the path that I like to be on, right? Transactional is just that. You kind of make the transaction and you're done. And, you know, there is a small percentage of people that, that really like that. And that's what they look for in a business. And they'll keep coming back and do that transaction over and over again. But a relationship yep. can last forever. And you can keep sure. on without having to push them up and upsell everything. It kind of naturally happens where they want to use you more if they, you know, learn to trust you and really connect. Yeah. I was going to go to that. The no like trust factor, right? That's, that's right. ultimately where we're getting here. And, uh, it just makes such a huge difference. Yeah. Well, that is, uh, yeah, that's the reason everybody should go out and build that network, nurture mm -hmm. your network. It's not all about making the sale right away. Now, for my next section, I don't really have much of a uh, segue here, so I'm just going <laughs> to jump into it. We mentioned a little bit that you have the podcast 
that you're you're trying to videoize it we'll say mm -hmm. um and uh i don't know do you want to let's first talk a little bit about the that sounds terrific podcast uh what is it about like what types of people do you have and what, what kind of content do you cover well, it started, you know, kind of around the pandemic. I had um, an old supervisor that was telling me, you know, you're always talking about doing something, starting something, making a difference, that kind of thing. And he really pushed me. And I have to, you know, I'll publicly thank Michael Scroll for really making me start a movement. And really what that sounds terrific is, and I've told this story once or twice before, is... Um, there's a lot of negativity in the world, even around some positive movements for change. And um, I just want to highlight more of those positive movements and those things that people are doing in the community to make an impact in, in a great way, right? So uh, that sounds terrific. Kind of came from an other podcast that I listened to um, called the Crime and Sports, where this, there's two, two, two guys, basically. Um, and one, they're both comedians and one of them just doesn't, <laughs> he made a thing called that sounds terrible. All right. And it, it, he highlighted, um, there's like a Twitter handle and he just kind of talked about the things that sounded terrible to him. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I, I, I was thinking of a time, you know, at the time about a show title, that's when I'm like, you know, I'll just do the opposite of that. Right. Yeah. So that's how that sounds terrific was born. And really I go out and find people that are leaders in the community. It doesn't have to be in New York here, it could be anywhere. And I just highlight what they're doing. And it could be uh, corporate America, it could be nonprofit, it could just be one individual that is, you know, uh, volunteering. Um, so it's pretty broad, um, but I love it because it expands my network even more, right? Right, right. Yeah, it probably works really well for that. And, you know, kudos to you for focusing on the positive news. We all know, right, like yeah. the reason it's all bad news on the news channels is bad news sells. So, like, to kind of counterbalance that, we need a lot right. more. That sounds terrific podcast, <laughs> right? Because they're yeah. not as, uh, yeah, yeah, you're not as beholden to the sponsors, I guess, you know, to get the, the, to, yeah. To, well, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm getting, I've gotten a couple little bites about sponsorship and maybe Excellent. sponsoring an episode here or there. And, you know, like you said, you know, the other type of news really sells. So organically growing this audience has been tough, right? Yep. Um, so looking at the numbers and trying to figure out like, okay, I did really well on Apple this week. Or why is that? Was it the guest? Was it the way that we presented the social? Mm -hmm. Those types of things. So... Well, see, now you've given me another great segue because the theme this month on the Creator Network is analytics, right? And right. we're 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 kind of touching on it now. So let's let's uh, let's hop into that a little. Um, sure. I wrote in my notes that you're not an expert, but you're not a novice when it comes to that <laughs> stuff, right? So it sounds yeah. like you're looking at your analytics. What's your kind of opinion on the importance of analytics for your? Uh, for your podcast? Um, you know, analytics are, are very important, more important than probably I've been trading them, to be honest. Um, you know, one of the, the drawbacks to being the jack of all trades right now and doing all the different things I'm doing is you spread yourself a little thin. Right. And um, part of what I want to grow this into is having, um, you know, either an intern or even an employee that's going to help with some of those things. Um, but in order to know where you're going, you kind of have to know where you've been kind of thing. Sure. Um, and so when you look, especially at analytics and social media around a podcast, um, you kind of try to see what is doing really well and what your audience is responding to and, you know, where your growth or potential growth could be. Um, so when I look at, like, I just used the example before about like, okay, how am I doing on Spotify? How am I doing on Apple? Um, you know, I use Anchor as my uh, podcast uh, platform, you know, and I usually steer people towards that, you know, and, and I love it. I love the, the very simplistic use of that platform. But I think that what I'm seeing in my statistics anyway, that I'm getting more listens on Spotify Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe Apple. Apple's a little hard because of the bridge that you have to kind of find between the analytics uh, on the platform and then the analytics and anchor. Okay. So, um, but I have to make a decision based upon some sort of data 
that makes logical sense. And otherwise, I'm going kind of willy nilly and going, well, I think, right, you know, that this might change. And some of that is important experimenting right Right. yeah yeah the a b testing can be can be really important for just kind of figuring it out right you have to win some and lose some like by definition to to kind of find that right path um but what kind of analytics are you looking at so is this purely downloads or do you get i i don't use anchor fm myself so uh analytics wise do they give you kind of uh i don't know length of of listen anything like that or is it is it purely download subscriptions that type of thing there's definite downloads and there's people that like have automatic because you know like right when i upload the episode it almost automatically gives me like a couple right sure um but they do talk about and when you really dive deep in, in that and on Apple and a few other places, um, you know, the listen time, how long the, the average listener is. Right. And then also looking down at the demographics. Now, I, I don't have a lot of international listens, um, but I have like a weird pocket, you know, in the UK. And, <laughs> and, and honestly, I think I know who that person is because I recently <laughs> interviewed somebody right. uh, in the UK. Right. So, um but it's kind of cool to be able to, to see some of that. And my audience is still kind of growing. And, and right. part of it is you talked about A-B testing. And I, I can't really compare apples to apples yet. I, don't, I haven't had too many guests that have very similar backgrounds. Mm-hmm. The only thing I can kind of compare to right, that I can figure out anyway um, in my, my small brain is like region to region, right? Okay. So, you know... Uh, if I have a guest from Rochester, New York, am I getting more listens from Rochester or is it still like basically the same? Right. And I have noticed that looking at the data that, um, you know, and I, I kind of took a little peek at it um, before our episode recording here because I wanted to be able to talk a little intelligently. Excellent. That you do get a spike and it's kind of logical in a lot in a local area from somebody that you interview in that area. Um, right. And, and that could be from their social media um, and sharing with their friends and and things like that. But it's a tangled web, right? That that is weaved around this data, and you got to kind of figure out well, why did this happen, um, right? Right, and what's important and what isn't, and uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that and that, as I mentioned, that's what we're going to be learning about this month on the mm-hmm. Fade Wheel Creator Network. We do have a couple like uh, events that are open to the public. Um, both are at 8 p.m. on a Thursday and on June 10th at uh, 8 p.m. This is mm-hmm. Eastern. Uh, we have Kanishka of Yamu Media, who's going to come on and talk analytics with us. And then on June 24th, we have uh, Dylan Stansuski of Baby Scripts, who's going to come on and talk with us about mm-hmm. analytics. So with that in mind, and because I am going to chat with these people before they're on, if there's one thing about analytics that you would like to to kind of learn during this month, uh, what would that be? I mean, I think in general, like I would want to know what is the most important thing to them to mm-hmm. to kind of read and 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 look at when it comes to to reading the data. Like you know, it could be very customer focused. Um, It could be, you know, how to build that community, right? So what is most important to business? Because I guess the the challenge that I always have, um, and and we've talked about this right before recording, is monetizing the work that I do. Um, I love helping, and there's a reason I probably work for nonprofits or things that, or volunteer at nonprofits, is because I very often forget to ask for for money for my my services. Right, right. right. You know, um, so... I think that that's important. That's the question I'll ask both of them is, you know, what is the most crucial thing that you need to be looking at and analyzing when it comes to, um, you know, your business? And it's specific to podcasts, I think, for for your situation, right? That's your main kind of uh, media channel. Are you making any other types of media or do you have plans to once we kind of push, push through the, uh, the learning curve on the creator network? Yeah, I mean, I picked up a couple clients for different things. There's a gentleman that I'm trying to build a, you know, basically it's a pitch doc video um, and commercial for, um, and, and you know, he has a new business that he's sort of started up, and 
um, you know, we both talked for quite a quite a bit um, and figured out it's sort of like a it's one video that we're going to break up into three parts um, that can play very seamlessly or you know stand alone. You know, one's a pitch to investors, one's you know to, to the general customer, and and the other one's sort of an awareness video of like their branding and everything. So I have taken a lot of what you've been teaching and you know definitely the equipment and try to to use it in different ways for other clients. Um, you know that are I'm consulting with or coaching. Um, and that's what I, again, I, what I love about your network is that I can call, you know, Sean or Barb or, or you or Morgan and ask for, hey, I have this person that I want to work with. I have a basic idea of what I want to do. What are your thoughts? And they're going to like give me a bazillion ideas, um, which is great. Or, you know, validate uh, what my original thought was, uh, which is often, you know, surprisingly enough what they do saying, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Maybe take it from this angle. It's like having a team without having a team, right? Um, which is the hardest part about consulting or freelancing is that you often don't have someone to throw your ideas at and see, you know, you, can throw, you throw them at a wall and you can see if they stick for you. But, right. Um, it's great to have advice. That's a, that's a great point. And that is, um, as someone who on and off has, has been kind of on my own or the small <laughs> business owner, right. Never right. really getting up over small business owner status, but when you're when you're in your own echo chamber, you can think something up, think it's a great idea, and if you don't have anybody to validate it with, uh, you could you could be you know just screaming into the void there, right? Like there's yeah. uh, you're 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 not talking to people about what they want to talk to or talk about, and it 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 can be tough, it can be discouraging. So I'm glad you're finding that value in the network too. Oh yeah. Um, I think that's a, a huge part of it. The whole like-minded people hashing out ideas together is, is uh, I mean, I use it for our own stuff, right? Like right. We, um, everybody's always, you know, willing to help and contribute. And it's great for, uh, yeah. for that type of use case. So, and I, and they're honest, which is great. Cause you know, I've been in other environments and like, you know, that's kind of why I do like working a little bit on my own where, you know, staff have not been honest and you'd let you fall on your face and they're not going right. to do that here, which is, yeah. is great. You know, I had a friend in, in college <laughs> and I'm just thinking about it. He was brutally honest, but I loved it because I would throw an idea by him and it's like, that stinks, bro. And he really talked like that, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, great. Because then I'm not going to maybe fall on my face. And there's been a couple of times where I said, no, it is, it's awesome. And it's going to be awesome. And you know, he was right. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> Turns out. Uh, yeah, that is, um, that's, that's a great point. And that's a dynamic that I think maybe is um, that I hadn't even thought about, but the employee to business owner dynamic or, you know, manager or whatever, is certainly right. different than that, like peer to peer conversation. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, just one other point, um, you know, the other thing you have to not have to really deal with in this environment, at least so far, because I don't, I mean, there's other podcasters, but there's not this compact competition, right? Sure. So if they steal my idea, I really don't care because you know what? I'm going to steal it right back when I'm like, oh, they do that better, right? Like that, <laughs> yes, you know? Will. <clears throat> and that's great. Yeah. Whereas a company like you, you're sometimes afraid to share your idea because, you know, the boss might take it to the other boss or, you know, your coworker sure. will be like, oh, that's a great idea. And then, and then all of a sudden it's theirs. Now, I'm not saying that happens all the time, but it happens and yeah. it, it sucks, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to move into the one question I ask every time on this podcast and it's called the smarter so business yeah well it shouldn't be too bad hopefully it's called the smarter business podcast because we feel like especially utilizing video is what we usually focus on but uh what we want to do is give people business tips on how to run their businesses smarter you know little mm -hmm. tidbits there so is what is one thing that you've done to make your business or your client's business smarter one thing you know it's got to be one I, too That's i knew the, this this was yeah, coming yeah. up you yeah. know and i like to cop out and have many things because of the jack of all trade right. thing exactly but yeah i will say that having a personal board and this goes back to the networking thing 
um, is that one thing. So you have, um, and, and I've honestly put people into like board seats, right? Mm -hmm. The guy that you go to about analytics, the guy that you go to about video, the gal that you go to about, you know, business transactions, you put together your own personal board of people that you help and that will help you and that, you know, will do everything that they can to make, you know, you an expert in that area. So I would put together a personal board of, you know, five to 10 people and really utilize them and make sure you're helping them. And this could be through like a BNI, could be through ripple effects, um, you know, some kind of networking group, or honestly, it could just be kind of how I have it set up, which is unofficial. And I don't even think it, half the people know that they're my board members. Right. Um, yeah. But I kind of stole that idea from from someone that I connected with. And, and they said that I'm like, that is an awesome idea. And I already have it. Right. But now it's <laughs> official. So um, the, that sounds terrific board of directors, right? <laughs> that's that's excellent. And I remember um, when I first started out in business, I was told to do something like that um, by a you know business mentor that I had through, I can't even remember what group it was through, but one of these business groups, like a score or something like that. Right. And um and I just blew it off, right? And I would just like follow my own path. Probably it set me back years, you know. <laughs> like I should have been talking to people who knew what they were doing, right? Versus just right. figuring it all out on my own. So um but now, yes, I agree. I've got I've got a couple peer groups that 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 um that I think kind of fill that role um for our company and um yeah, you got to be willing to take feedback. And if you're taking it from people who know what they're doing, even better, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you think about it, like even in any, every business, you have a bookkeeper, you have like, even if you're a single owned person, you're utilizing some sort of service at some point or another. Yeah. Um, so it's just sort of like your own uh, personal board for your business. But there's also that for your life, right? So you have that friend that you go to when something sure. happens. Um I just kind of have them filed away in my head. Uh, but that's been extremely helpful, you know, especially going through, you know, the pandemic and all those other stuff, you know, what I've noticed about the pandemic and about my own personal experience with it and some others that I've talked to is it's sort of that there's like a um, COVID renaissance, I like to, to call it, that you get that to your creative roots, back to your family, mm -hmm. back to all these things and just sort of like re regrow and it's going to be interesting to see you know where business goes and where our country goes and the world goes when this truly is sort of over um because it's not <laughs> that's my basic feeling on that that we're going to go through another kind of you know change of culture and how we look at things um we're not quite there yet but we're going to get there and i'm going to have my personal board <laughs> advising me on what to do right Right. Navigating those choppy waters. Right. Yeah, so totally. Awesome. Well, that is the end of my standard questions for this podcast. But in every interview I do, whether it's testimonials or these types of interviews, I like to ask one uh, open ended. Did we miss anything? Do you want to talk about anything else? And right. uh, yeah, for anybody who. I, I usually say like very often you start talking and then knock something loose or, you know, somebody really wanted to say something they didn't get there. Um, some people have, you know, recommended a book or software, or, you know, mentality tied to business here. But um, I don't know. Is there anything we didn't touch on that uh, you would like to kind of push out there to our audience? So being on the other side of the mic, right? Um, <laughs> I asked this question, too. Um, and it's it is, this, it is the stumper, right? Yep. It's like, what is it that I haven't said yet that I don't want to forget to say? Well, um, you know, I think that the biggest thing that I've learned through like life and especially the, this recent experience is that it's very important to, to do something that you love to do. Um, cause you'll be much happier doing it. Um, and you know, obviously there are people that are in a situation that can't work what they do what they love to work right um but there are ways that you can kind of craft around that 
and finding different nooks that really are passion part of that job, right? So my advice to people is, you know, do make that time to be creative if you love being creative, but also just do make that time to find your passions and know yourself. Because I think the hardest part of my journey is that I do focus so heavily on helping other people that I don't kind of really take the time to understand what <laughs> what Nick needs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because I don't get much energy out of that. And I think I've shared with you a number of occasions that um, I love doing you know work for you or work for other people because I kind of thrive on the energy it creates. Whereas my own personal projects kind of get put on the wayside, right? right. So the big thing is a change in perspective. And what I did was I used my personal board member. I was talking to them about this and they this person told me and said, you know, don't the people that are on your podcast or that you're working with need you at your best? And I said, that's true. So just changing this perspective and saying, you know, I'm making time for the podcast. I'm making time for this because people are depending on me for that too, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I didn't think about it in that way. So my advice is do what you love. Make sure that you're looking at it from the right lens and perspective. Um, and that's why I have like 20 podcast episodes pre-taped and recorded and ready, <laughs> and kind right. of ready to go, right? Um, so uh, because I realize that the people that I'm interviewing need that attention just as mm -hmm. much as, you know, Neil and the Vidwheel Network and, um, you know, job searching and all those other things. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's a, uh, yeah, self-care has been a big thing uh, that's come out of, of the pandemic too, right? Like right. everybody, um, a lot of people have had a chance to step back and yeah, figure out what, what works for them and so on. Right. And one more thing I want to add on to what you sure. said about like finding your passion is a lot of people I think feel like it's got to be this like life altering, quit my job, you know, go out in a blaze of glory and go find my passion. Like there's some, some uh, real value behind just, finding it you know dedicating a small amount of time to something that you're super into and then seeing if it expands from there right you yeah. don't have to uh blow everything up to pursue your passion just just do it uh in bite-sized pieces and before you know it uh it may have expanded to something where you can quit your job and go out in a blaze of glory right. if that's right. your vision right so don't ever go out of blaze of glory <laughs> don't burn those bridges right but well that's good advice i, I agree with you i mean and and I, and I, you know, trying new things is something that I would always tell my, like going back to my college days again, mm -hmm. try new things, experiment. That's your time to experiment in college, but it, it doesn't end there, you know? Right. Um, don't be afraid to try new things because you might love those new things. And, and like you said, it could be as simple as going for a walk every day and you clear your head and all mm -hmm. of a sudden, you, you know, you're writing a book or you're writing a song or, you know, um, to mention Sean Lewis again, to playing guitar and 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 getting right back into music, right. um, you know he's a part of our our Bid Wheel Creator Network, and um, I I did the same thing. I have a friend who's reteaching me to play guitar, so because um, I dabbled for years and <laughs> created some really bad habits, but it's great to kind of know yourself and discover those things, right? Well, we'll have to look into a creator network um, jam band or something. I can play the tambourine. That's about where my musical skills <laughs> hit the wall. <laughs> so, Is it on beat too? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's pretty erratic. So we'll have to deal with that. Maybe maybe something That's a little awesome. less structured would be good. So Yeah, uh, we can do something. <laughs> I like singing better. I'm better at singing than I am of, um, of actually playing guitar. So excellent. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll get something together. Perfect. Coming to a stage near you. All right. Yep. With that, I think I think I'm going to uh, say thank you to Nick. Uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for, for coming me. on. Thank you for uh, sharing your insights. Um, I will share in the show notes where to find the That Sounds Terrific podcast. Uh, you know, if you want to plug any other links. Uh, sure. You can go ahead and do that now and we'll do some closing notes. 
But yeah, I mean, the easiest thing is probably just to go to that, that sounds terrific.com, which is, you know, where all my social media lies and everything there. You can find it there to keep it short and sweet. It's not something I often do. Perfect. <laughs> Single call to action. That's important right. marketing stuff. Learn that from Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And uh, to everyone listening or watching this episode, uh, if you enjoyed the content, I would love to have you subscribe either on YouTube or wherever you're listening to the podcast. And feel free to rate this podcast. Uh, it helps us get noticed by other people if you like the content that we're putting out there. So thank you very much. And we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.